episode of Reel It In, we're going to be doing a how to catch big dusky flathead. Scott and myself, over the last two years, have caught a lot of these big fish, and people ask us all the time, what techniques do you use, what lures? So what we're gonna do with this episode is go through things that work for us personally. People do catch big flathead on other methods and other things, but we're gonna share with you our techniques that we believe work for us. We hope you enjoy this Reel It In episode, How to Catch Big Dusky Flathead. Not a bad one. Imagine at 57, so not a bad start in the dusk. Dusk little fish for him, so put it back in, eh, Bob? Right, mate. Yep. Ready? Yep. Boo! I think we've got a nice fish here, mate. Nice flathead. It's good. We've been working hard this morning. Finally got something. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's good fish, mate. Good fish. Really good fish. Oh shit, this dude. Dude. You might have to get your net this one, dude. Yep. Oh, come on. Watch your teeth, that's close to a metre, dude. I don't know, man. Got to be 90, eh? Oh, easy. It's a big fish, dude. It's fat. Been testing these nitro bait and vipers out. Casting these bigger lures. You need a rod that can get out a decent lure, and this is why. We just gotta land this one. My heart is pounding, man. He's got a little right down his gob too. Oh, that's a big fish. That is a big heavy fish, man. That's what it's all about, eh? Take him. been fishing really hard for this fish. It's been really windy. We've just come into this little cove here. And this is a beautiful fish, man. We're just saying we're using these baby vipers because not so much to land this fish, but to cast the lures we want to cast with, to chase these fish, we need something like this. We'll talk about this a little bit later. Let's have a look at this fish. Well, here's the results. We've just gone just under a metre again. She's gone 96, this one. But look at it, look at that, look at the size of that. That's a fat fish. That's a fat fish. I don't know what to say, dude. I'm, just... <laughs> I'm 
I'm too excited. As we're just saying guys, we're using these baby vipers now. This is actually a three to six kilo stick and most people would think that's pretty much overkill for chasing flathead. But it's not the it's not the size of the fish, it's not the fight that why we use these why we use these rods. There's two reasons. The first one, probably the main one, is this. Now you can see how big this lure is. Probably a good 17 centimetres there. That lure in itself weighs quite a bit. Then we've got the 3 8 jig head, and quite often in deeper water, if we're fishing in maybe 7 metres, 8 metres, we'll even go to a half ounce jig head. When you start getting that, and then you're putting it on your nice little light brim rods that you might chase your, your normal flathead with, you can't cast it. So we've started to use these heavier rods, a nice 4,000 reel, and this nitro's had no problems flicking this lure out, and well, that's the results right there. Forgot to mention too, the second reason why we use these bigger rods, and it's because of this really nice fish. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, it's a Joe! It is Joe, you net it, net it. Ow, dude. It's a fucking Joe! Oh. <laughs> it's a Joey! It's a Joe! Sorry, I'm so excited, oh my goodness. So people often ask us what, what size leader we use when we're casting with these sort of lures. Well, we've tried a few different types. We, we go down to 10 sometimes, but when we're seriously targeting these bigger fish, we, we like to use 16 pound. This fish here had, had the lure right down. There was a good, the lure, the, the lure was probably coming out of its mouth at about that point, And there was some serious damage on the leader there. And well, when you fight a fish like that, it takes a couple of big runs. They only have to do a couple of head shakes and 10 pound leader just, you'll lose it. And it's, it's a heartbreaking thing. So about 16 pounds what, what you want to be using. That's what we've found. One of the most important things you can get yourself with this kind of fishing is a good pair of Polaroids. Personally, we've been we've switched over to tonic eyewear in the last 12 months and they've got the best lens by far. The co color uh, contrast that you can see is, is amazing. And that's what people say with flathead fishing, like, oh, you don't need the Polaroids, you know, they're for brim fishing, sight fishing. But I tell you now, fish like this come off weed edges and little drop-offs and stuff. And we've been fishing now through this area here. We're in a bit more shallower water now. But you can see some of the things that we're looking for. We've got little patches of weed. There's a little bit of a rock ledge over there. Fish, these sort of fish sit on those things. So when we're out from the bank, we're sitting out from the bank maybe 30 metres away. With a good pair of Polaroids, you can see those edges. And that's where we always try to cast those, those lures. And, and quite often, when you see that perfect little little edge there, that little weed edge, you cast to it, and there's often a fish there, and sometimes one of these beauties. But again, yeah, if you have these fish out for a few photos, make sure you give her a little bit of a swim, make sure she's right to go. This fish is pretty good, we've looked after it, we've had it in the live well. And it's always nice just to stand and, and enjoy the fish too. So, she's just about ready to go. And that's what it's all about, guys. That was awesome. It's probably hard to see on the camera. That's what we're talking about with what we're seeing. From back, we're probably about 20 metres off the bank. And we can see, with our good Polaroids, right through that water column. We can see the weed patches, the sand, that's exactly where we're casting our bigger lures. So that's why we recommend a good pair of Polaroid glasses so you can really see what's under the surface. On a day like today, no wind at the moment, we're in a cove, it's clear. We're casting exactly where we want to cast. We're on to another. Not a, we're still targeting the big fish, obviously. I'm actually flicking today a bigger vibe, trying to get them on the big vibe.
we've got a fish, it's going to be probably hope, around about the low sort of 60 marks, we'll say. That's so still a nice, it's a nice fish. I'm just trying to flick me off out here. Need a bit more line. So yet again, we are flicking bigger lures, bigger vibe. It's hungry, it's downed it nicely. And there she is. But as we're saying, that's our theory. The bigger lures, the bigger fish. Well, I've hooked up again, just fishing along this drop off here. It goes from a metre down to about three or four. And we've just hooked another fish here. It doesn't feel huge, but it feels okay. Going around the back of the boat there on me. I'll just spin that around. We've just found now they've really come on the chewing. If you're fishing in an area where you know there's fish, Just, just persevere because flathead, I reckon they, they come on like a light switch. You, you can be fishing along an area where you know there's fish and you can fish there. You think like, oh, where are they? They're not here. But they are there. They are. And they turn themselves, they turn on like a light. And all of a sudden they'll all start feeding. And you, know, you can catch four or five of these in no time. So just persevere. Under the old flathead grip there. So it's, so it's early in the morning now. Um, what we're doing this morning is working along this little rock edge. I don't know whether the camera can pick it up there, but you can see that weed and that rock coming out to a bit of a point. This is where fish always congregate. We often find good fish sitting on these kind of points. So with our Polaroids, we can see, we can see a lot further than the camera can. We can see right in. We can see where that weed edge uh, ends and, the, and there's a bit of mud or sand down there. And we try to hit those spots. Probably just a little bit close here. So we'll probably come out now, work our way along this bank here, get a nice long cast out and, and bring it just inside that weed edge there. So this morning I'm using just this uh, five inch lure. It's not as big as the one I was using yesterday when we got that big fish. But um, we're just trying to find a few fish this morning. But it's still a fair bit of weight. So we're still, we're still using the same rod, the baby viper. With these, not so much you don't have to do with this, but when you're casting these big lures, you know, you don't, you're not always going to have to do your little fancy little brim flicks and all that. You really need to hoik these things out. So I use a two-handed cast. Don't be afraid to put a little bit of a breeze behind us. Get it up in the air, get it out as far as we can. Just flick it out. Get a bit of distance there. And we'll, we'll see wait for a little bit of slack line, we know it's hit the bottom, we want to be up, make sure we're on the bottom. And with these shads we really give them a good rip, give them a rip, let them sit, wait for a bit of slack line and rip them again. More times than not when that lure is sinking you've got that little bit of semi slack line and you'll watch your line, you'll see that twitch, bang, you've got to be right on the ball, you've got to hit it hard. And that's how we hook probably 90% of our flathead on that slack line. and. Hardly even feel it, but you see that line twitch. Sometimes you'll feel it through the rod. That's why you need to use braid, of course. Anyway, that's how we do it.